the recording to start and then we begin. Okay, the recording has started. So um, I, I hope that you are doing good from wherever you are. So this afternoon we are going to learn about uh, machine learning models and um, I will take us through um, the different models uh, that we have. Thereafter, I will also show us uh, um, a tutorial on uh, uh, a notebook on the different um, uh, machine learning models and um, how to score the accuracies of um, the different models and compare the different models that we have in uh, machine learning. So uh, I will not cover every um, every everything in in terms of the models that we have in machine learning, uh, but uh, today I think I will only cover um, seven of them. So let me present my my screen and then um, So I hope that you can see my screen. Uh, so we will jump straight into a presentation on machine learning, and then uh, we will go through some code. So basically, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not the first time uh, we are hearing about uh, machine learning. Uh, we have heard about machine learning. Um, several times. So um, machine learning is a branch of artificial intelligence. Uh, it uses computing, um, uses computing based systems to make sense out of data. So it extracts data patterns, fitting the models and the functions, and then also classifying of um, the data uh, that we have. So machine learning system uh, it can learn and it can improve uh, with with historical data and also time and experience. It's different from um, the traditional ways of uh, programming, uh, especially in in software based. Uh, so, um, in machine learning, we we get to understand that uh, uh, we uh, the the models or the models that we have can can be trained with historical data and they can be able to learn with time and experience. So it bridges uh, theoretical computer science and the real noise that is found in the data sets that uh, we have in in the world to today. Um, machine learning in, in real life. Um, there are a lot of places where we uh, we get to um, we get to use machine learning like in Netflix, uh, in Google, DeepMind, uh, predictions of um, uh, the different uh, uh, businesses, models that we have. We also get to um, use machine learning in uh, creating of models that understand or uh, act in a human way. Like for example, self-driving cars, we get to use uh, machine learning. Um, so uh, machine learning models are basically classified into two parts, uh, into two groups. We have the supervised and the unsupervised learning. So in unsupervised learning, um, this is where um, the data is not, um, uh, there is no predefined or known set of outcomes. Um, there is no predefined or known set of outcomes that uh, we we have. Uh, Musa, you have something? Oh yeah, uh, someone in the chat is asking if you could um, maximize the screen, if you could be on presenter mode. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, is that better now? Yeah, I'm sure it is here. Yeah. Okay, so um, 
so we have supervised and unsupervised learning. Um, unsupervised learning is uh, where uh, there is no predefined or known set of outcomes that we, um, we, we, we are trying to look for. Uh, so we look for hidden patterns and the relations that are there in the data that we have. Um, a typical example is uh, clustering. So we get to uh, understand that when you're clustering, you uh, understand the different patterns and the relations that um, the data sets have. And in those patterns and, um, and relations, you get to um, give classifications of uh, the data sets that you have. Uh, like, for example, you can see from here, we um, are doing some clustering. Um, just look some, uh, we've clustered these ones together, the red ones, the green ones, and the blue ones uh, in different uh, 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 access that they are in. So that is unsupervised uh, learning. Um, supervised, uh, so in supervised learning, um, uh, supervised learning is uh, where we, there is a predefined outcome that uh, we are looking for. Uh, the, um, for example, in the data, there is always some uh, there is always some predefined uh, output or set of output that uh, we are trying to find. So the models um, uh, it models the relations between um, a set of descriptive features and the targets that uh, we have in, um, in in that data set. So it fits the data to uh, a given set of function, say uh, the function of x outputs to this one. So we are trying to look um, for the output that it gives from the function that uh, we we create. So there are two groups of uh, problems that we get to um, to realize in supervised learning. That is classification um, and um, regression. Um, in supervised learning, in classification, we predict, um, uh, we try to predict given classes, uh, so um, in, in a given sample of data. So say like, for example, if um, the sample has got some descriptive features, we are trying to use those descriptive features so that we uh, come up with some discrete value um, at um, at the end as, as something that we are looking for. And then the regression analysis is uh, one that predicts continuous um, continuous values. So like for example, here, if we are trying to, uh, in, in classification, we are trying to look at given species of, um, given species of, um, uh, of a leaf, so it tries to uh, use these descriptive features like the sepal length, um, the sepal width, the petal length, the petal width, so that it can give, um, uh, it, can, it can classify that this particular set of uh, leaf belongs to this species. Yeah. Um, machine learning as, um, as a process. So, um, Machine learning, we get to understand that uh, is is like a process where we, uh, um, it 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 kinds of it's like a loop. We define the objectives, we prepare the data, we model and build the data, we evaluate that model, we deploy the model, and get back to um, the same kind of loop again. So in uh, defining the objectives of uh, uh, the set of machine learning that you want to, you define uh, measurable and quantifiable goals. And you also use, uh, in these stages where you use, uh, use this stage to, to learn about, to learn about the problem. So you get to understand that what, what, what is the problem that um, you are, you are dealing with uh, when you are defining your objectives of, of that, uh, the objectives of the process of machine learning. In data preparation, we uh, get to normalize the data, we transform the data, we find the missing values and the outliers of that data, and then we try and um, um, we try and fix if we have got missing values. 
in the data. So we try and fix those missing values by either maybe dropping or maybe um, uh, fixing or um, filling, filling the, those missing values. Um, in building the models, we try and split the data. Um, yeah, basically most of the time we split the data into the training and testing and validation uh, sets. So we give the training test, the training test and validation of, of, of uh, splitting the data into those categories. And then we do the feature engineering. We just try and get the features that we are going to use uh, for this kind of model. Then we estimate the performance of um, the model that we are building. After that, we evaluate um, and we do uh, a model selection. Um, so after that, now we go to now model evaluation. Uh, we study uh, the model accuracy. We try and find uh, the accuracy of our model. How much does it score in terms of um, um, giving us whatever it is predicting versus um, um, the real values that we, or the, out, the output that we are expecting. And then um, we work better. Um, uh, this one works better than the naive approach or the, uh, the previous system. Um, so we also, when we are doing the model evaluation, we also try to understand or we try to uh, reason that does the results uh, that we are getting from this particular model, do they make sense in the context of the problem that we are trying to, we are trying to solve? Um, does, does the result make sense? And then after that, we get to the model deployment. Um, yeah, and then now um, we get back again to define, after that we can get back again now to define the objectives of why you want to, uh, of the machine learning model and um, we proceed with the same uh, loop again. Um, so machine learning as a process, uh, the process is uh, we have the data preparation um, needed for several reasons. Uh, some models have strict data requirements in that um, you have to scale the data and then, then, then the, data, the, the data points have to be like uh, in intervals. Um, that is especially when you're doing your uh, standardization of um, of the data and your transformation of, of that data. Some uh, characteristics of the data may also impact drastically on the model performance. Like for example, if you are trying to find an analysis of, um, or you're trying to give predictions of, of um, some features that depend on uh, a given data set, um, you will realize that in your prediction, um, the, the characteristics that are um, are given in that data will affect a lot so that you're able to make um, uh, um, the correct predictions or your model is able to perform as you wish it. So like, for example, if maybe you are using a regression uh, analysis so that you are able to determine the prices of rents or the prices of houses in a given uh, particular area, um, there are some characteristics that will uh, actually impact a lot, like maybe the distance from the CBD um, or where most people are, uh, the size of that house. So those given characteristics, they, they, they impact drastically in, in, in the performance of, um, of your model. Um, we also have the time, um, the time on data preparation. Uh, it should not be underestimated. So when you get your, your raw data, you have to try and look at the missing values, uh, the error values, the different scales that are used in that uh, particular, um, uh, that are used in, in the data set that you have, um, the, the, dimension, the um, dimensionality of that data, the types of problems, and many others after you have gotten your raw data. So then, then after you now get to your data tr transformation, where you do now the scaling, um, the centering, the skewness, outliers, the missing values, and, and also the errors that you have in, in that data. Now then, now you have your, your data ready, and now you can get to now uh, the modeling phase, uh, where you are going now to do um, 
the modeling of um, um, you, you, you're you trying to create your model of the model that you're going to use in, in the machine learning. Um, feature engineering, you determine um, the, the predictors or the features, um, predictors here in terms of the features that are there in that data that, the, that you're going to use. Um, it is one of the critical questions to answer. Uh, if after you have done, you have gotten your data and your data is now clean, now you want to get to, um, to now the modeling, you have to ask yourself what are, uh, are the predictors or you determine the predictors or the features that you're going to use. Sometimes um, we also need to add some predictors so that our model is able to, our model is able to function or it will give us the correct output that we desire at, uh, at the end of it. And then some of the time also we could reduce uh, the numbers, uh, the fewer predictors uh, to give us more uh, interpretation or uh, interpret, make it easy to interpret the model uh, and also it could be less costly. Um, um, most of the models are also affected by high dimensionality, uh, especially for uh, non-informative uh, predictors. So, yeah, so uh, we have wrappers here. We have um, multiple models, adding and removing the parameters that um, we uh, have in um, the, the data set. And then the algor algorithms that, that we use in the models as input performance and the outputs, and then genetics um, of the algorithm. Um, we have also filters, we evaluate the relevance of the predictor and then based on, uh, based normally on, on the correlations that are there that we, the correlations we have in, in, in the data set. Um, so machine learning as a, a process, uh, model building. So we have said that uh, we split the data um, The training of uh, the model for the validation of the model and for um, the test. Um, so, yeah, so we, we define our training, our validation, and our test sets. And then we do a feature selection, review the, de the, the decisions made previously, and then we estimate the performance, uh, visualization of the results, um, discovery. Um, you discover interesting areas of the problem space, and then also uh, statistics and the performance measures, um, evaluation and model selection. Uh, you evaluate the different uh, models that you have, and then now uh, you just be able to select, um, you be able to select the the best or a better uh, model from uh, the different models that you have. So that is. Um, what you term here as model selection, you select the, the, uh, a better uh, a better one in terms of how you have evaluated and how you have also scored the accuracies of uh, the models. Yeah, so um, with that, I would love us to get to um, some code and then we, and then we, um, can see how it goes. So um, yeah, I, I hope you can see my screen for um, this given code. Um, I think I shared it. I think you have access to it in, in the week two document. So um, I say that uh, we will just look at, uh, uh, I think seven models today. Uh, from this uh, from this notebook that I shared. So um, in this first cell, we we are just importing. We import the OS. We print the list of files that we have in um, in this um, um, our train and test data um, in, in 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 this the file explorer of this folder that we have. So here in this folder that we have we can see that we have um, the data.csv. And then after that, we import all the libraries and the data sets that we are going to use 
for this particular um, for this particular um, machine learning um, models. So we import pandas. These ones are for um, pandas and NumPy libraries to use in the manipulation of, of, of the data. Uh, import pandas and then import the NumPy. And then to process, to pre-process our data, we use the sklearn preprocessing. We uh, import um, label encoder. And then to fill the missing values, uh, we uh, we import simple imputer from sklearn impute. And then to split our train, our train data, um, to, to split uh, our data to the train, um, train and test uh, data sets, we, um, we import um, train test split from sklearn.model selection. And then to visualize our data, we have uh, Seaborn and uh, Matplotlib. Uh, and then to train our data, uh, we have we we import um, xg xg b classifier that is xg boost uh we import decision tree classifier we import uh, the random um the random forest classifier from sklearn.ensemble we import um, k nearest k neighbors uh classifier from sklearn dot um, neighbors and then we import logistic regression from sklearn dot linear underscore model and then Banuli and uh, also um, Gaussian. So th those are for the naive base um, classifications that we are going to see in this model. And then to evaluate the end results we have um we import uh we import accuracy score uh, and also the confusion matrix from sklearn dot matrix dot metrics and then leave one out from sklearn model selection and then uh cross validation score cross val score from uh, uh, sklearn dot model um, underscore selection so we are importing our data with the pandas uh as here and we give it the name DF. Uh, this one is for now. Now we have uh, imported the data, and then we can now explore uh, the data set that we have. Uh, we can see this data set is um, um, uh, just uh, for some medical field. Uh, we have the age, the sex, yeah, and uh, the old peak, the slope, yeah, um, like that. I think it's it's for some heart disease um and then after that we now print the number of rows and the columns we just have 303 rows from from this data set that we have uh we get to now describe uh this data that we have and we we can see the description of the data the count the mean um and so deviation and things like that and then we now uh print uh the summary of categorical data um and we have this these as uh, our um our categorical variables that we have in in this given data set so these are the the categorical um uh, variables that we have in the data set and then after that we split the numerical and the categorical variables um and we can see how uh, the numerical columns we have this one and then the, also for the categorical columns we have this one and then we just print numerical columns this ones um, and also the categorical columns we have um, these ones so we can be able to see these are the numerical columns of um, this data set and we can also see the categorical columns of um, of the data set that that we have so after that we get to uh, exploring the categorical columns of um, of the data set uh, that we um, of this data that we have so these are um, um, the descriptions of the categorical um, columns of um, of the data set that we have uh, and we can see at the top the unique um, the frequency of them and also the count yeah and then we get now splitting the columns 
for one uh, hot encoding and label encoding. So we split the columns and then we get now to uh, an encoding of um, uh, yeah, one hot encoding, this one, and then we also have um, uh, label encoding for this given data set. Now let's investigate now, do we have missing values in our data set that we have? And uh, from um, running this uh, df that is null but some we can find that in the data set that we have we do not have any missing values in uh, our data does not have any missing values now um yeah one hot encoding and label encoding uh, of, um, of of uh, of that data set that we have we will use um uh the function that is built in pandas uh, get get dummies uh, to simply encode uh, to one hot encoding columns one hot encoding we use this um, dot get dummies uh, so that we are able to get one hot encoding from these um, uh, the different columns that we have of um, this this data set here then we now have the label encoding for this given data set and uh, we can be able to see the, uh, the the for loop that we apply here uh, for this label label encoding of our data then after that we merge all the the data frames that um, that we have that is the label columns uh, we, we we merge all the all the all the data frames that we have so that we come up with um, uh, this given uh, data frame here. Um, thereafter, we bring the data together. Um, so we have, um, uh, we drop categorical columns and then in place means um, replace replace our data with, with a new one. Um, yeah, don't forget that the axis is one. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we merge these data frames. Uh, dot concatenate and then we merge the x one hot encoder columns and then with also the, the label encoded columns and then we print all the columns uh, to see all the columns that we have for the data that now we have uh, brought together or we have merged together and we can see um, the data that we have merged together as this one x here so after that then we now split the data to the train and test sets um yeah we define y um this is the value we will predict uh it is the target variable that we are looking for and then we drop the class um dropping the class x so like um we drop that, that class from, from the X variable so that we only have the X and then we have the targets as, uh, 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 and then we have the targets as, as, as the Y. So the X now will be our features that you're going to use so that we are able to predict for uh, the target, which is Y. Yeah, um, and then now, uh, now, now, now we split the data. Um, now is the time for us to split the data into the train and the test set. Um, you can specify the size. Um, so with us here, we have the X train, X test, Y train, Y test is equals to, um, uh, we assign, uh, give it to train test split X, Y, and then the test size we've given us 0 0.33. So a third of, um, uh, of the data will go for the testing and a third of the data will be used in the training. Uh, two thirds of the data will be used for the training. So now, after that, now we get to train the different uh, machine learning models that um, we discussed. So here we, uh, um, as I said, we are going to only look at seven of them. We're going to look at the random forest. Uh, and then we are going to use to look at decision uh, decision tree, logistic regression classifier, Bernoulli naive. This one should be bare base and then Gaussian naive base and then the KNN that K nearest neighbors and then the X G boost yeah, it's a it's, it's a, a new one but not new as such 
So the first one here is the random forest. We define the random forest model. Um, RF is this one. And then we fit our model with our train data. So our train data was the X train and then the Y train. And we fit it to this, uh, the random forest. So we remember we defined the random forest here with RF. So RF.fit and then the X train, X train, Y train. And then we predict the results for the X test, uh, for X test data. Uh, we predict these uh, results, then see the first 10 columns um, and um, and the actual values. Um, so the predicted and the actual values. Uh, predicted values are these ones, and then the actual values, we can be able also to see the, the these ones. Um, yeah, so that is for um, the random forest. Um, and then we also have decision decision trees. Uh, so for uh, decision trees, we define the decision tree model. Uh, DT is equals to decision tree models, uh, decision tree classifier. And then we fit our model with our train data. Um, DT dot fit the X train and the Y train. And then we, then we predict the results from the X test uh, data. So these are the, the this is um, the predicted results for this decision tree. Uh, with the X test um, data. And then we now uh, see the first 10 predictions and the actual values that um, are given for um, for this given uh, machine learning model. And you can be able to see the predicted values of these ones and also the actual values uh, are actually um, these ones here. And then now uh, we get to logistic regression. Um, and in logistic regression, uh, just the same, we define the logistic regression model. Um, logistic regression model is um, yeah, defined as that one. And then we fit our, uh, our model with our uh, train data, uh, log.fit, x train, y train, and then we predict the results uh, from the x test data. Uh, and we are able to predict the results. Um, these are the predicted results, and these are the uh, the actual results. Yeah. And then after that, we also have the uh, Bernoulli naive base classifier. Uh, the same thing. We define our uh, we define the naive base model, and then we um, we fit our model. After fitting our model, then we predict the results for the X test data, and then after predicting the results, we can be able to see the, the predicted results and also the, 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 the actual results. Um, the same as the, Go, uh, the Gaussian naive base, um, the same thing happens, the predicted uh, output and uh, the actual the actual output of, um, of the data set that we have. K nearest neighbors, the same thing, we define the KNN model. After defining the KNN model, we fit our model uh, with our train data, after fitting the model, then we uh, get to predict. Uh, we predict the K KNN um, um, uh, values that we will be have the predicted values, and we also see the, the actual values um, that are there. And then we also have the X X XG boost. Um, we define the XG boost. XG boost is that one. XG boost classifier, and then the number of estimators. The learning rate is uh, this one. So, and then we fit our model with our our, our training data. So, XG boost. We have the X train and then the the, the Y train. That means that if the model um, don't improve um, itself in five rounds, it will stop. It will stop learning. So. Um, so you you can save your you can save your time and then you don't have a train um, you, you don't have a train your your model when 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 you're using um, this this given um, model in, in machine learning. So uh, the XG boost um, the goodness of it it also gives uh, this one early stopping gives um, uh, it 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 it, uh, uh, it tries to improve itself in five rounds. If if the if if um, um, if it stops learning, yeah, it, it will stop learning if there is no improvement that has been made in in, in these five rounds. Yeah, uh, it will it will get to an early stopping with, uh, after those five 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 rounds, and then we provide the test data to evaluate the model performance. So the evaluation X test Y test, 
um, and then we predict the results that are going to be um, output by the XGBoost um, uh, classifier. Um, so after that, now we have seen those, um, the seven models that uh, we have, and we've been able to make predictions from uh, those seven models. So after making uh, predictions from those seven models, and we've been able to also see the actual uh, values that we actually, uh, that we expect. So now we, we try to compare the model uh, and the performance. Uh, and the first thing that we'll use here is uh, the confusion matrix. Um, so in, in the con confusion matrices, um, first parameter is the actual value. The second parameter uh, are the values that we predicted. So uh, we can be able to give uh, the confusion matrix for each and every given uh, model that we have. So we, we, we are able to, um, to give here um, the confusion matrix for the random forest, for the decision tree, for logistic regression, for Bernoulli, naive base, uh, classifier for Gaussian naive base, for KNN, and also for the X, XGBoost. Um, and then we just print those, uh, the confusion matrix, matrices for, um, for this given, um, um, for this given models that we have. So down here, you can see uh, the random forest. This is the, the confusion matrix that, that, that it has. The decision tree, this is the confusion matrix it has, the logistic regression, Bernoulli, and uh, all the way to the XGBoost. These are the different uh, um, confusion matrices that um, the different models have. And after that, now we get to, uh, uh, we get to score now the accuracies um, of uh, of our models, how how accurate are our models giving us um, the predictions that we uh, that we have? So um, the first parameter is actually the, the the first parameter that we use is the actual values. The second parameter is uh, the values that um, uh, we predicted. So we are able to uh, we're able to score here the accuracy performance of the random forest, the decision tree, and the different models that uh, we have. And then thereafter, we, we, we here we just print, uh, we print the, we print the accuracies or the score that, the, 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 the score accuracies that they have. So we can be able to see here that the random forest was able to score 0 0.83. Uh, the decision tree was uh, able to score 0 0.77, logistic regression 0 0.86, Bernoulli naive base 0 0.81, uh, Gaussian naive base was um, 0 0.66, KNN uh, 0 0.6, and XGBoost 0 0.82. So we've been able also to give a score to uh, the different uh, the different machine learning models that that we have here, and we have uh, been able to see. Uh, what what do they score in terms of um, uh, the comparison of the actual uh, the actual value that uh, we have versus the values that they predicted? What percentage were they able to get right? And we have been able to just uh, uh, get the percentages that they were able to to get right from uh, this accuracy scores that we print here. So um, after that, now you. You can just choose which model, um, which model uh, uh, is better, and uh, from that choice uh, of the model that works better, you can be able to proceed with that. So that is that in uh, machine learning models. I want to now welcome uh, questions. So. Yeah, Rafa, so we, um, at the end of it now, you are able to see, you can select a model from the accuracy scores that they they have, which one performs better. So do we have questions or comments in, in the class? Yes, we have Tadese. Okay, thank you, Lisman, how are you? I'm fine. Okay, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, 
relief is good. Uh, even uh, I'm very surprised when I see one algorithm on our exercise, uh, which is uh, the last one, the, uh, which is uh, the XG boost. I, I need to know about that thing. I will further investigate it because it is new for me actually around machine learning is issues. But my question is, uh, we have a data now uh, for A-B testing. Is, uh, are we going to use that data to apply this machine learning uh, approach? Is it in this way we will do, or it may be clarified in feature? Okay, so, um, so tomorrow also we'll be learning about um, something else but it is part you you can see it as part of, um, of um, the task that was given uh, that they are, actually I think I think there are four or three that have been highlighted um, for, for you to use especially for this a b testing um, that uh, you're going to use and I know xg boost is one of them so you will um, have to uh, do XG boost with the data with the, the with this you will have to do XG boost with this um, with this data that you have been given the challenge that you're working on today so yeah the models that are outlined in the document yeah you will um, you will have to use those ones okay thank you do we have someone else with a question Anyone with a question before? Okay. Yes, Musa. Uh, there's a question in the chat about uh, one hot encoding and uh, label encoding. Okay. Um, so a question on one hot encoding. about one encoding one hot okay. um, Celine this must be what leave one out I think that's what you mean okay Okay, so um, when when we are um, when we're giving our our data, um, when you've been given your data, you uh, you perform what is called the labeling of the data, so that you are able to find uh, what what is uh, the the target variables that uh, you that you want from this. Um, what what is the what what prediction do you want to make from the given data? So in this given data set that we have here, we we um, we are trying to look at patients who have uh, um, who would suffer from heart attack. Okay, 
sorry for that. So we are trying to look at um, uh, label and coding columns. So we look at the different columns that we've been given, and then we are trying to, from 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 the different, from these columns, we we are trying to get, um, um, we are trying to give them the labels of uh, what what. Um, what our data is going to predict. We are trying to encode our data and create a new data frame of, of it. And then we notice that we gave the columns, um, we gave uh, the columns names in columns, column arguments. So, um, and then we add new data frame so that we are able to uh, match from the X and the Y, that is the target variables that we have. And then after that, we uh, we we we'll be able to um, we we'll be able to uh, find. You see, for this for this given data set, we um, we are finding um, we, we are finding the label encoded columns, uh, the sex, FBS, and the uh, exam. Um, so. This, this this is like um, this is like the targets that we we are trying to find at the end of it. Like, um, let, let me try and explain from the challenge that we have this week. This week we are looking at um, we are looking at this 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 data set of um, the, the, the the people who have already seen um, this advert versus those who have. Who have have not interacted with it, so uh, from it we 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 are trying to find out that um, how many or from the data that we've been given, uh, how many like said yes or, or how many answered a yes to 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 it, and then we we try to encode to find out the targets um, uh, the, the the data the, the sets of data that of the people who said yes. And those who uh, said no to um, the advert or uh, the question that was posted, uh, if they are aware of the the brand, the brand lux. So in encoding, you you try to um, you're trying to get uh, the, the 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 targets that you're going to use, and then from the targets that you're going to uh, use, you um you will now separate from you will now separate from the the features that you uh the features that you're going to use in predicting that target and um the question that um uh, that Celine asked on leave one out so some of the time you Um, some of the time, especially when you are doing other other uh, other models like um, the support vector machine, um, you 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 try to uh, minimize or reduce the number of uh, of, of the number of uh, uh, features that you are using for that given uh, for that given uh, the number of features that for that given data set. So you you try and reduce uh, the dimensionality uh, of it by leaving one of the features outside or leaving some of the features outside, uh, and also especially when you're doing not support vector machine but um, the principal component analysis. When you're doing principal component analysis, you try and uh, leave some of the features outside. So that is what is entailed about uh, leave one out. Yeah, do, do we have um, someone else with a question? Okay, looks like we don't have any other question? So, 
if we are all satisfied, then I think we can stop at that. Or if maybe one of the tutors have got uh, something to add, then we can add something. Uh, Musa, not really, uh, but I think uh, on the XG boost um, algorithm, um, just something that's interesting is that it's really, it doesn't come as part of um, scikit-learn, right? So it's, it works more like random forests, uh, but it's, it's, it's a more efficient uh, boosted algorithm, right? So you, if you want to use it, you need to install it separately. Uh, that's one thing, uh, and you can also use it not just in Python, but it's also been implemented in other programming languages, right? Uh, the next thing is that uh, for a long time, um, the Windows in Kaggle were using XGBoost, right? So in the early days of of, X, of, of Kaggle competitions, uh, the mo the one algorithm that winning the most competitions was XGBoost, so it's worth looking at. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, thanks, Musa. Um, so it looks like we don't have any other. Maybe we can stop at, um, at that, and then we can continue with the questions in Slack. So have a nice time, guys. Thank you so much.